Hello and welcome back to Silver Star Arcade and more of the Great Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we had a second summonation examination. Um, and we have now put forth the idea that maybe the lady was stabbed because Mrs. Garadib. Ah, shoot. Knocking stuff over. That Mrs. Garadib. Uh, threw a knife out the window when she was fighting with her husband and it landed in the back of uh, the victim while she was picking up the book that had been thrown out. And I think Von Zeeks is very aptly describing this trial. This trial is rapidly descending into a farce. Ah, oh, no drinking sound effect? Oh, maybe there was one, but my audio is scuffed. Like a corked wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. Stop wasting expensive-ass wine. But what follows is so repugnant, it's good for nothing save the gutter. If I may, Lord Von Zeeks. The defense has just put forward a credible alternative explanation for what happened. Incredible? Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond. But let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourselves better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. What do you mean by that? What's his angle this time? It should already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the Gerdiv household runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means that the distance from the Gerdiv's house to the scene is some, yes, 15 yards. Let me see, 15 yards. That's around 14 meters. Cool, one sec. Never mind, I guess. I went to go find my tape measure to figure out how much that would be. Um, but all of my tapes are missing. That's kind of concerning. I don't want to have to go buy new tape measures. Anyways, 14 feet. Or 14 meters. Yeah, sure. Whatever that magical number is. I can't visualize distance in my head. It's a real problem. For 14 meters? Oh, that's a little farther than I imagined. This seems like a big deal. Is 14 meters a lot? I don't even know how, how, like I said, I can't visualize any distance. Centimeter, inch, yard, foot. Yeah, I can't visualize any of it. Except millimeter, because millimeter is like... Like when people try to put their fingers as close to each other as possible while still leaving a gap, that's basically a millimeter. And as you ladies and gentlemen of the jury rightly noted as having pretentious significance, the fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. In other words, the smoldering book, wantonly hurled by the lady of the house, traveled some 15 yards to land on the opposite of the road, neatly between the collapsed victim's fingers and thumb. Is that your final conclusion, my learned and eluded friend? Yeah, I'm just dropping his voice. It's, it's getting a little much and it doesn't get picked up on the mic very well. And did the jackknife follow a near identical trajectory to plunge right into the middle of the victim's back? This fantasy is somewhat stretching the notion of having a bad day for the victim, I think. Even those pathetic serialized detective stories have more believable plots. Damn, that's a rough insult. There's nothing I can say to that. That, that prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. One so Cool, apparently, cool, apparently I've been doing this one right. Susato. Miss Susato. Or Susato, I guess is, I don't know. Serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he? 
Um, maybe let's pick our battles here. My lord, might I be allowed to speak? As judicial assistant, you may speak for the defense, yes. Go ahead. The prosecution may consider the idea of fantasy, but what the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. To that end... Juror number four, Mrs. Joanna Garadib, must be called to testify and submit to cross-examination. Saints alive! A cross-examination of a juror! Damn, she's brave. Order, order, order. Well, this this is highly irregular. It is unprecedented for a member of the jury to be summoned to the witness stand. <laughs> and unnecessary. Lord Von Zeeks? Oh, I just realized this is totally just Gatto and his coffee. Gato has his coffee, Zeke's got his wine. There are already witnesses in the stand whose test whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine. If my learned friend's farcical theory has any truth in it, then both a burning book and a jackknife must have flown through the sky before this couple's eyes. And we must assume they would be able to testify accordingly. Hmm. What say you, witnesses? Up and down, boy. Yes, sir! Constable Riley Bates, reporting for duty, sir! Oh, the music's back! Well... Good morning, officer. Sorry for those knocking to now, sir! I haven't slept for a month on account of a villain who's appeared on my bed. Yeah, sa. Oh, they are so heroic, these London bobbies. Patricia, my darling, I've been neglecting you, but no more. Oh, Royally, my hero, you make me swoon. Very well, I hereby reject the defense's request. Oh. And all of the witnesses in the stand to testify again. State forthwith before the court any details pertaining to the defense's alternative explanation of events. Yes, sir. Uh, witness testimony. Constable Beats report. This case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garrett, and believe me, a London Bobby is good for his word. You see, sir. The windows on the top floor of the Gerdib house are top hinged casements. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help. My trusty Royley was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take me eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Well, this is quite startling. Top hinged casement windows. That detail is not in the police report, Constable. I, yes, I'm um, sorry about that. I must have been a little dowsy. Ahem. You cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Constable. No, sir. I'm um, sorry, but... What exactly is a top-hinged casement window? And you... You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. Uh, of course. Sorry. I found it, Mr. Naruhodo. Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Garadib's room. Alright, I'll try. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. But, as it's a top hinge casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. I'm glad you've rectified your ignorance. Hey, thanks! That's actually pretty 
Huh, he recognizes that we rectified our ignorance. The casement window's most prominent feature is its stay. A metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain point. It, it prevents it from opening? This is all news to me. Absolutely correct, sir. In other words, if a book or a knife had been thrown through an open through the open window, it would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down into the pavement below. No. You see the problem then? Good, your education in Windows is complete. God, I feel like I'm back in school. There was never any possibility of either a book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered. Something we've discounted already. That can't be! Did you see that, Rolly? That young Japanese man just collapsed in agony. Oh yes, my darling, I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Oh, Royley, you're so strong. God, this is making me sick. How is this happening? I haven't even started the cross-examination yet, and I've al and already my argument's been destroyed. Council, if you could drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. I mean, I, come on, my lord. Oh, good, another desperate situation. Mass examination. Constable beats report. This case has nothing to do with missing it. Believe me, London Bobby's good for the court. How can you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder to all of us policemen of our sworn duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Did he? can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man. It's what the job's all about. And that is why I stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and tell you what Bobby's good for his word. While rubbing my tired eyes, admittedly. Sir! Oh, Royley, you're so manly. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. Oh, Pat. Oh, Royley. God damn it, why do they have to be cute? Here I am. Fucking playing video games at 2 in the morning. You and me both. No, none of this is what I meant. You and me both, buddy. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garridan? Ah, I see, sir. You should have said earlier. So, should have said so earlier, sir. Yes, well, so could you answer the question? That was a waste of time, then. Oh, oh no, oh no. Absolutely, sir. I will answer it to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason why Mr. Mr. Gerdib's domestic dispute can't be relayed to the case. But before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Yes? It's very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London Bobbies of how we uphold our guide and principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here. So to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my warrant card for your perusal. But I must warn you, you won't be able to get through it without shedding a few tears. Th thank you. I'll try. Oh, I think this is the first time we've gotten evidence through a witness testimony. A small folding wall that identifies London Bobbies and contains rules of conduct which they must adhere. We are going to look at that immediately. A small folding wall that identifies London Bobbies and contains rules. I am one. A policeman will strive to preserve the peace within his allotted bet. I am too. A patrol and officer is expected to walk 20 miles around his beat every day for the furtherance of the community relations. Metropolitan Police Regulations. I am any crimes fall under the jurisdictions of the beat in which they are discovered. If a crime is discovered on the beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigation and help detectives. 
Oh, you wanna know who would love this? Hosanaga. Hosanaga would love this shit. Uh, yeah, just press everything. By which you mean they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir. They're just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see. So they're restricted as to how much they open. Oh, my, my jaw muscles are about to seize up. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. Here is the location where objects would have fallen. Hmm, yes, directly opposite the scene of the crime on the other side of the rather wide road. Would it have been so hard for somebody to mention this top hinge casement thing before? Well, I have another question for you, Constable. And what would that be, sir? How do you even know? Why would you have. Oh. Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Miss Scaredip's house is furnished with? Ah, well, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation <laughs> yesterday. Aw, oh, look at his portrait. His portrait's kind of cute, if not a bit dopey. Excuse me. Do you have something to add, Mrs. Brett? Or Mrs. Beat? Hmm? Sorry. You look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? Oh, I was just remembering. That's all. We really were so lucky. Oh, the music. Lucky? What do you mean? Well, of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen on Royley's beat. It was so close, you see. Oh, I hadn't realized. Oh yes, that street Briar Road. That's the boundary between Royalty's Beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Oh, I just realized she's wearing the same scarf. Constable Beat. Eh? Oh, yes, that's right. That's the reason why I was helping out with the interviewing of the occupants at the Gerdeb household yesterday. Their house is on my beat, you see, sir. Hmm, that really was kind of close then. Constable, I wonder if you could clarify something. If the Gerdeb household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it is as well? Outside Mr. Gerdeb's house? Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Just think, if that woman had been attacked on just on the other side of the Briar Road, we would have never been able to go for that meal to celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a Bobby, after all. Extraordinary people are Bobbies, tirelessly working for the benefit of all Londoners. God damn. I can't remember any time the last. I can't remember the last time people had this much faith in good things to say about their uh, constabulary. Do you know what I think? I think it was the good Lord's way of rewarding my Roy for all of his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? That must be it, Pot, my love. That must be it. I think perhaps we should make sure we have the information officially on record. Leave it to me, Mr. Narahodo. I'll take care of it immediately. The pavement where the victim was found lies just outside Constable Brett's beat, the border of which runs down the middle of Briar Road. And now it's my turn, I think. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. Hold it! But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already, and it was dark. Oh, but Roy and I were sh Roly and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky and looking for our lucky star. Her portrait looks good as well. Sorry? 
The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Can't it guide you to answer the question? <laughs> if a flaming book had cut across the sky in front of us, it would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Let Royally be an inspector, I would have said, three times at least. Of course, what with the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. In short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir, that is correct, sir. As sure as the night sky in London is starless, sir. Hmm, it certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over the help. Yeah, this might be the last episode for a bit. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Roy Lee was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. I didn't take me eyes off the cr crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Oh, wait, shit. Oh, those were, those were testimonies. Ah, oh, shit, I'm really out of it. I'm sorry, miss. I'm so sorry, Mr. Naruto. Mr. Naruhodo. I had no right to speak out. What do you mean? I requested the cross-examination of, of Mrs. Garadip without consulting you. Even if the judge did deny me. Oh, I see. Well, I agree with you. We do need testimony from Mrs. Garadip. If we're ever going to get to the truth of this matter. Do you really think so? Well, think about it. No matter how far it is across the road or how the windows open, Mrs. Garadip's book found its way to the scene of the crime somehow, didn't it? You're right! And then there was Mrs. Garadip's reaction to me showing her the knife. That woman's hiding something. I'm sure of it. You're right again! We need to use this cross-examination to uncover more clues. Well... <sighs> We'll get to the bottom of this one, one way or another, I swear. Yes. All right, uh, what, was, what was it? Was it the last two I missed? Obviously, if anything, I've been thrown out. I did leave the scene to go fetch help. Yeah. Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer, is that right? That's right, yes. If it had been on Royley's beat, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. Can't be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. So really to told me the way, only I sort of got a little lost on the way. Patricia, my darling, that's why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to me. Oh, Pat. Oh, Royley. Oh, please. Hey, look at these two lovebirds. So I suppose I was gone about 15 minutes. But like I said, my Royley was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. I was off duty at the time, of course, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. I'm gonna start sleeping like he does. I didn't take my eyes off the scene of the crime for a moment. Nothing strange to report, sir. Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time, never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. What about earlier testimony where your girlfriend said when she came back she found your face down in the snowbank? No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. I can swear on that on the yard's honor, sir. I think I gotta sleep. Really? That seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garadib household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? No, uh, yeah, fall asleep, dopey. Uh, could, could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burnt as well? Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Well, sir, that book was in the lady's hand from the moment we arrived at the scene. 
Is that so? There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two mysteries of how the knife ended up in, the, in her back and how the book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. Um, can I ask you something, please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Oh, um, yes, of course, what is it? You're, you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell. What? I, I wasn't really, I mean, what's she doing? Please, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. Yay, the music. I, I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. No excuses, I don't want to hear it. My voice will be heard. My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Yes, Mrs. Brett. I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire. Sometimes, the path of the least resistance is the sage one. <laughs> that was a very loud mutter. I heard that. That Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Well, watch out, sir. I might let you get away with something like that, but my royally won't. Duly noted, Mrs. Brett. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. Uh, where's that cold air coming from? It's the middle of winter. Well, actually, it's not. It's only October. Duly noted, please, I humbly ask you to continue. What could she possibly be about to be about to say, I wonder? I don't know, but I'm over here more tired than fucking possible beat off oh, or whatever his name is. I know I saw, my eyes never let me down, my sense of direction is a little off sometimes though. I didn't take uh okay, yeah, the press it. I need more water. Mrs. Beats, nobody's questioning what you've told us. I saw it, I did, that evening, I saw it clearly. That little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back sl slinking away from the scene. Uh, you, you tell me, Phoenix. Uh, sorry, we're gonna see, okay? And I know what I didn't see as well. I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. Oh, well, very clear. You... you also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction? Oh, y yes Well, that's a little embarrassing, really. I always ended up... ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Royley. He gets ever so cross. Speak, man. Excuse me! Excuse me. Constable Beat, is there a problem? We don't have a problem here. Uh, um, no, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, um, well, in a way, sir. Yes, sir. I was just remembering that the same thing happened that evening is all. You mean Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident? Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box in the next beat over from mine. But she was gone a far bit longer than what I was expecting. I thought she'd be back in inside 10 minutes, but my darling was gone a good 15. Oh, Royley, you're such a tease. Keep it f keep it in your pants, guys. But the reason I was so long was because of the bouquet, silly. The bouquet? Sorry. What bouquet are you talking about? Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Royally so romantic. He saved up for it while with farthings and happenings he found in the gutter while doing his rounds. Yes, how romantic. I'd forgotten all about it until just now. Ha he had you, my darling. Duh! Huh? Uh, oh, yes. But that was just between us. No nope, talking about to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Really? Oh. 
Oh shit, did, is Beats the killer? Or attempting. What was that all about? Constable Beats looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Naruhodo. Naruhodo. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Miss, Mrs. Beat about that bouquet. Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Keep your mouth shut, pretty boy. What happened was, I dropped my bouquet and ended up losing my way for a while. Hold it! Hold it. You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. I was so upset. When we ran over, I saw it was a woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked, I dropped the bouquet royally gave me. I was in a dark spot where the streetlights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then, you went to the police box to report to the policeman whose beat it was on. Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the other constable, you see. That's when I spotted my bouquet again, but the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. Fucking knew it. She died on his beat, and he moved it to the other side so he could spend time with his wife. Fucking knew it. Should have said something. In case you need reminding, Mrs. Beat, the victim, is not deceased. I was all flustered for a moment, but I heard a voice calling from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right, silly me had gone over to the wrong side of the street. Although, I'm going to blame the bouquet this time. I can't think of how it got there. I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of the Briar Road to the opposite side. Hmm, curious indeed. Isn't it? But the worst of it is, I forgot to pick up the bouquet again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose really bought me. With that change from the gutter he spent so long collecting. By bouquet, do you perhaps mean this sorry solitary rose? Oh! Oh, yes, yes, that's it! That's the bouquet he royally bought me for our anniversary with old bits of change he found in the gutter. Maybe you just call it a rose. Tell us, Lord Van Zeeks. Where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garadib household. In front of the Garadib's house? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning, as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I have it back now, please? Hmm. No, I think for good measure this road should be added to the court record as evidence. Oh. Anniversary bouquet has been entered to the court record. A present for Patricia Beat from her husband, Royley. The shock of seeing the stab victim caused a treat to drop it. Richard stood back and died. But it's a symbol of our love. I want it back after the trial, do you hear me? I want it back. Good grief, rest, rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget Mrs. Brett. Or Beat. I didn't take me ages off the crime scene for one moment. So uh, nothing strange to report on that front, sir. So. Did, did I already press this one? Hold it! Nothing to report. That's correct, sir. I had my eyes wide open the entire time. Never looked away for a second. No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. I can swear to that on the yard's honor, sir. Really? That seems a little strange. Bake a pun, sir. Strange, sir. Seems all to get regular to me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd find something in the hand of the victim. Haha, it could be a different copy, sir. No. Da 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 ba 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 ba
Skip. Wait, wait, wait. What was that last part? Uh, something about this. It was in her hands. What do you make of all this? Mm, yes. The whole idea of an invisible attacker has been troubling me all along. Ooh, new, new dialogue. But I believe I'm starting to get a picture of what really happened here. The fourth book that had no business being at the scene of the crime made me sure that Mrs. Garrett was hiding something from us. But it's becoming increasingly clear that someone else has been hiding something from us as well. I think I may already be armed with everything I need to strike a decisive blow here. This time, it's going to expose the whole truth about this mysterious affair. This case has nothing to do with it. Believe me, a London Bobby is good for his work. Not that you see, sad when it obviously I've seen it. But make sure nothing was disturbed. What happened when I dropped my okay? I never was in my way for a while. Nothing strange to report. Let's check where she stood. Uh, it's An English rose, it's such a beautiful flower. Ah, this is a rose, is it? I've never seen one before. Do you not take an interest in flowers, Mr. Naruhodo? I wouldn't say that exactly, but I do know three types at least. Gosh, three? Yes, plum blossom, peach blossom, and cherry blossom. Perhaps you should consider branching out, learning some that aren't fruit tree based, for example. Oh, wait, that's the rose again. It's very stylish paper the flower is wrapped in, isn't it? It's just an old newspaper, Mr. Narahodo. Oh, I suppose it's because I'm not used to seeing English prints. It looks so exotic to me. Ah, I see. Is something wrong? Oh, no, no. I was just thinking that if you wrapped a stone-baked sweet potato in English newspaper, it might look like some sort of fancy cake. Ah, uh, Susada-san, you do love your cakes. That was cute. I'm glad we got that dialogue. But yeah, was that all? Specifically shows it in the victim's hand. Ah, fudge. I actually don't know which one it is. Bobby is good for his word. Um. Ah, uh, shoot. I should save first. Oh, my throat's killing me. Let's, let's think. Come on, sleep-deprived brain, you got this. You see, uh, the windows on the top floor to get our top hinge casements. Obviously, if anything had thrown out the window, we would have seen it. Did leave the scene to go fetch help. My trusty Roy, there was there, make sure I was disturbed. And 
end up losing my way for a while. Anything about nothing strange to report. Objection. Ah, so I was right the first time. You claim, Constable Beat, that there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. But that cannot be. Oh yeah, you done fucked up now, boy. What? What do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. Beat, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection. Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. But considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described, no doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, but into a gutter where it belongs. Back into the gutter where it belongs. Meager? Objection! But if that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to the fact? No one else approached the scene and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore to that on Scotland Yard's honor. But the bouquet belonged to me. It has nothing to do with the case. That's that's why Royley didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly it's not only your bouquet we're talking about here. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? Think about it. Besides Mrs. Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Gerdib's book. Mr. Gerdib's copy of The Lion's Pride, which was thrown out of the window by his wife, would have struck the pane of the casement window and landed here on the west side of the street. And yet... It was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Mrs. Beat's bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime, on the east side of the street. But in fact, it was actually found here, on the opposite side of the road, in front of Mr. and Mrs. Gerdip's house. There's no logical explanation for these things, unless some will somebody deliberately moved them. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my royalty's done something wrong. Don't listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. Whether and on about books and bouquets, why should we care? It's nitpicking, that's what it is. Oh good, Mrs. Scary Dip's come around. You might call it nitpicking, Mrs. Garadib, but deliberately meddling with the crime with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called um tampering, Mr. Narahodo. Oh. But the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it, for a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection. Tampering. You've barely heard the term before. Tell us, my learned friend. Who would possibly have had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with seeing the crime scene. It was deception, right? Yes. That evening, all the evidence and all the testimony point to that one particular person. Counsel, I must demand that you substitute this conjecture. Who are you saying is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? Royally beat! Take that! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Royally Beat, it was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense! Why would my Royally do something like that? There's no straight straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. Mrs. Bre Beat? You said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. But the, f the 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up. It's all nonsense. It's all lies. 
What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him. He did it. If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Oh. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. Beat, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. Uh, well, well... Objection! First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well. Hey man, I'll, look, look, Zeke's personally me, I'm on your side, man. We are bullshitting our way through this as much as we fucking can. But your accusations lack one very important thing. What motive? You claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there is only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right, he's right. Well, my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. Nope, nope, he tampered with it so he could take you to dinner. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. Oh, but I, I got your motive right here, bitch. Constable Beat had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Naru Naruhodo, have you... Have you managed to solve this mystery? I sure have. Why is my room getting so goddamn cold? Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out your reputation as a lawyer will be irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Yes, my lord. Breathe in, breathe out, fall asleep. Constable B's motive for tampering with the crime scene was to hide where the, book, where the victim fell. Because he didn't want to have to do his goddamn job. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what the, this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You, you mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen, remember? It was right here, as if anyone didn't already know. That's certainly what everyone has been led to believe, but in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. Wait, then how the fuck was our client behind her? Because he had to... Oh wait, no, because he could have just jumped over the gap to walk down the street. Yeah, no, nah, shit checks out. But in fact, this isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? What? Aw, oh, their scarves are connected. How cute. I'm beginning to wonder where these tumultuous trials will end, counsel. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know, my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? No, oh, that's simple. It's right fucking here, bud. But, but that's... On the opposite side of the road. I, I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadib's book fell directly down from the open window above. And your bouquet, Mrs. Brett, never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good, good gracious! Objection! Objection. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That's, that's right, I saw it with my own eyes. It was 5 o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim's aid, that was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It, it can't have been. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you for help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print, the victim, 
the victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. What? What did he overlook? The bouquet, I presume. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the rose bouquet. Lord Von Zieg said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't have been in the dark. It could. It couldn't be seen in the dark, obviously. I am too fucking high off my goddamn rocker on opium to talk. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Royal Beat. Uh, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again, but I haven't slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? Oh, royally. It isn't true, is it? What the lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I know it is, because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. I had a dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Everything. Come out. Everything. Exposed. Only, it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. Good... Good golly! Yuck! <laughs> oh, Lord, Lord. What on earth is the meaning of all of this? Oh, Royley, why? Why would you do something like this? Moving a corpse is, is a criminal offense, isn't it? Wishing the victim dead should be one too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. I, I can't say, sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all of this. For damaging the Yard's reputation. For, for everything. I have a possible explanation. Keep keep your panties in a bunch. For why on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? Ah, my voice is going. You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Von Zeeks, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the standing truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord! Now then, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a, very, a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. What gives away the motive for Constable's unthinkable actions? Uh... It's the rose again. Take that! I realize I'm a foreigner in this land. And I have only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called Bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that, though honorable, the troll on the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. 
Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes. It was our very first wedding anniversary. Constable Beat has, had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife, and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime scene along Briar Road. When he saw that, that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, what must have gone through the man's mind? But sir, just on that particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. Mrs. Beat puts up with a lot being married to a Bobby like me. I wanted to show my dear wife how much I care. This is the worn card that Constable Beat offered to lend to me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Oh-ho! Constable Beat. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you've said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Oh. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat Beat's beat. Good gracious. Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you've done? It was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal could still be lurking somewhere. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was laying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigation and help detectives. Why here? Why did this happen to ha have to happen here? And why tonight of all nights? Why? It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak, it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the next beat to mine, Pat. So you'll have to go to the police, police box that covers it. Turn right along Mir Schumer Street and then... Oh boy, that's that's a lot. Wow, playing these games really does make you feel different than watching someone else do it. Oh, don't. I'm. I'm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, constable. I, I just wanted just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. Oh, Royally, just that one night. You knew that the incident was on your beat. Your evening of celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside of your jurisdiction. Just across the street to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring Beat's care. 
You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. Listen to this music. Ah, fuck, no. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rolly would never have left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. No, no, no! No! no. A little bit of time has passed. Because my headphones died, so I'm no longer in that kind of emotional state, which sucks. But anyways... Oh, I see your meaning now. But God got me back from my sins, didn't he? That's why... That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Riley. This was all my fault. I should never have dropped in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Royley. And can you tell us, Constable, how many books did you move from the one side of the road to the other in total? Huh? Oh, um, four it was. Yes, sir. Definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsumi, and the fourth being the one that fell from the window upstairs in, Ger in the Garadip household, of course. But, but what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the others were scattered haphazardly around, I mean. Oh, well, sir, that's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? When we... Really? Okay, third time's the charm. Maybe this time I'll have enough charge to make it to the end of the episode. When we first ran over to the scene... The victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding? Oh, yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. Fourth book's information. Book inside The Lion's Pride. This is in the victim's hand when Mr. Beast first ran over. I thought it was an open and shut case at the time, you see. There was only the two people at the scene, and Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it, I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it all, all over the road would make a jot of difference. I, I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. Poor guy. My lord. Yes, Lord Van Zeeks. I believe that concludes the cross examination of the witnesses. Oh, god damn it. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Roly? What will happen to him? For now, you are free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home late. Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. Alright then, my love. One last thing, Constable. Sir? Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. Yes, sir. Carve that lesson into your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Ah, uh, never again, sir. Y you mean to say... Leave. Now. This trial's not yet over. Uh, uh. 
ça Well, way to start in revelation, I must say. For the love of God, give me a place where I can end the episode. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of the crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally, that the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsumi, is the only person who could have possibly committed this crime. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. Lord Von Zeeks, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will, and if further investigation is warranted. Prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. You will name this other person who could have perpetrated the crime. Take that! The defense would once again like to request the cross examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case. It's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joanne Garadib. Me? Me? Oh, dearie me. Objection! You just said you had no objections, dipshit. I'm very tired. It's four in the morning. That request has already objection. been denied. But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadib, answer me this. What do you want to know, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadib. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down find its way to what we know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadib. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back, have you really never laid eyes on it before? No. Oh. I don't recall it. Seriously? Am I supposed to remember everything I pick up and throw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there is all that regalious. Over there and all that regalia said members of the jury needn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Objection! No, I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Oh! Make no mistake, you jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but that's just a common or garden knife. It could have come from anywhere. We have several like that at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? What are you saying? Please, Mrs. Garadib. Now, you listen to me. I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, the poor woman. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence. If you're going to insist on this being my fault. You will have to prove to me that I threw that knife, if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop. Do your worst. Uh, well... Well, Mr. Naruto, 
If I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Then take the stand, juror. Oh! The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Von Zeeks. I... I'm going to have to testify? Juror number four. As I'm sure you will appreciate, having observed it with your own eyes today. When this testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh, dearie me. So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadip. And mark my words, in this core of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Nothing bad ever happened to the Kennedys. Certainly, my lord. Oh, um, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Oh, listen to this music. This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. I'm here in the Old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer. To be continued? Oh. Witness, say your name, Rockford. And we're going to do this in the next episode. Holy shit. This, is, this episode's like an hour and ten minutes long. It took like four hours to record. It is 4.35 in the morning. I'm going to bed. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for putting up with this bullshit. Sorry for all the swearing. I'm tired. As always, stay safe, have fun, and have a great day. I enjoy this great music.